Ciao, everyone. <laughs> Buona domenica. Hope you're having a great day, no matter what day you're watching. I'm Esther. Alfredo Sauce right here. Alfredo Sauce is in the house. Welcome to our channel or welcome back to our channel, whatever it is. So today we're going to talk to you a little bit about the latest situation here in Sicily and in Italy. We're also going to talk about the first settlers. Alfred has some historical things, maybe some recipes and anything you guys want to talk about. But first, I want to show you guys this cup I'm drinking out of. I decided to start drinking out of this beautiful ceramic cup that Alfred bought for me in Shaka, right? Shaka is one of the three towns in Sicily that just has great, great ceramic. Yes, where are the other two? Santo Stefano de Camassa and Calcagirone are great places uh, for Shaka. And in fact, we did a whole episode on those three towns featuring a little bit of the history of ceramics. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is our these lemons. They may not look very pretty. Winter crop, winter crop. But let me tell you how juicy and delicious they are. We go through about two lemons. A day. A day, yeah. minimum. Put it on and everything. And also, this is the end of the O.J. Simpson uh, here. So I'm having myself a Sicilian screwdriver. Yeah, with fresh lemon. With uh, Sicilian lemon, uh, orange juice, and a piece of lemon. Kind All right, balance off the citrus over. Sounds good. All right, how was your dinner? Esther made a dinner that was, I was telling her, Esther, this dinner was littered with love today. I'll tell you one thing. We had the sausage. I like to have sausage on Sundays at this, point, this period of time. Sausage with the peppers and the onions that she broiled for me was terrific. Right now, it's a little bit too windy to do the, uh, the grill. But uh, we would have grilled it. Maybe tomorrow with, with the chicken. You've been, the, you've also been craving some lamb, but the lamb. So lamb's all finished. They do finito. finito order. There's no lamb right now until uh, the fall. I missed it. I missed it by like a week. Right after Easter. It. It's like the day after Easter, right? Flip, it goes away. The price, <laughs> right? The, yeah. The price, price is, goes up. You can't find it on the lamb, even though there's a lot of three-legged lambs walking around here. I'll tell you. <laughs> Tell you that much. All right, let's talk about uh, the first settlers of Sicily uh, because we often around here talk about the Greeks and Romans, but actually, there were people, the indigenous people of Sicily, that lived here, right, Alfred? So the first ones were the Sicani, they were sort of um, on the east coast, uh, and then the Sicils came and they moved the Sicani in the middle, and then the Elimians came over to the west coast. Of course, also the Phoenicians were here 3,000 years before Christ. They set up trading ports all over. Um, so that's one of the topics that we talked about with Professor Gaetano Cipolla in one of the episodes that I'm going to leave you guys a link because it's really fascinating to learn about this. Now, Alfred, the Greeks came here. 734 BC, they landed in Giardini Naxos and quickly made themselves, made their way around the island, right? And how far did they go? They didn't, I think Termini and Meresti was one of the furthest they went, right? Well, they, they expanded westward, but their strongholds were pretty much on the east coast. I yeah. mean, with, uh, with uh, the tyrant uh, Gelone in Setacusa, for sure. I mean, he made greater, greater Greece, so to speak, greater yeah. Magna Grecia. Magna, yeah, Grecia. Magna Grecia. Yeah. And in fact, Syracuse and also Agrigento became the most powerful city states in all of Magna Grecia or Greater Greece. They you were know, so powerful, Alfred. They're not just powerful, but also extremely rich, right? They were, they were stupid, though, too, because during the Pun <laughs> honestly, during the Punic War, uh, uh, Geloni backed, he didn't, they didn't back the right people. They backed the Phoenicians against the Romans in the Second Punic War. And they ended up, they ended up the Carthaginians. Getting, they got their asses kicked at the end of the day, the, the Carthaginians. But wait a minute, now, see what you just said? Carthaginians, Phoenicians, just so everybody knows, the Phoenicians originally came, they were seafaring people. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were the ones that developed the color purple, by the way, and that's yeah. what they were, royalty was used, uh, it was purple. They came originally from what today is Lebanon. They were seafaring Palestine. people from Lebanon, Palestine, Lebanon, which is, of course, in one, one area over there. And then they got on their, their boats, and then they went and they settled in Tunisia, and they settled in Libya, in modern-day Tunisia and Libya, and they established um, Carthage, okay? Carthaginians and Phoenicians are essentially the same people, Yeah. okay? 
And Libyan, Libya today can go back to its history. Tunisia can go back to its history today. And uh, they have deep roots from Sicily, deep roots over there. Mm -hmm. And by the way, let me tell you about Tunisia one second. Yeah. Last week, you know, we were talking about, uh, I don't know what we were talking about, but <laughs> I, I should have mentioned Tunisia. You have no one idea how many tens of thousands of Italians have resettled there. As a matter of fact, a lot of the Italian, so-called Italian pasta there and the Italian oils there were originally made now from Italian seed and also uh, Italian machinery. So Tunisia is, we have a very close relationship with the Northern African uh, uh, towns over here. Every time there's a war, for example, they always call in the Italian uh, yeah. foreign minister to, to get involved in the, even Libya uh, to, to, you know, to calm everything down. But we have a very close, you know that we're only a hundred miles off the coast of Tunisia? Yeah. I could do the back straight. Over Shredo. there in San Vito Lo Capo, do, right? No, from, that's closer to Tunisia than it is. Uh, yeah, from, from Pacino, it's a hundred miles. I could probably yeah. do the backstroke there. Of course you could. <laughs> All right, but back to that interesting period, you know, you talk about the Punic Wars, uh, and the Punic Wars were actually, you know, the Romans were up north, and then they came back down south because everyone wanted control of Sicily, right? Uh, so the Punic Wars were basically a fight over the area of Mediterranean, and one of the big ones was held in Himera, right, on the western coast near Termini and Meresi, and actually in that episode of Termini and Meresi, you talk about what an important battle that was well everybody knows about hannibal hannibal Barker, mm -hmm. uh but that was his grandfather hannah bar and that was actually before the uh that was actually right around the time where the persians were invading the greeks okay and the carthaginians were kind of like on the side of the persians as a matter of fact they were going to send a two hundred thousand man force to buttress up the persians and if it wasn't for jelone instead of Cusa. Uh, that stopped that, that defeated them in a famous sea battle. Um, the course of Western history, in my view, could have been changed. Not only my view, but a lot of people changed. He defeated yeah. them. and uh, But Hannibal's grandfather, Hannibal, was killed at, where, where was the name Himera. of it? Himera. Himera, which we went to, a great place. It's, a, it's such a fascinating yeah. uh, place. There's the Temple of Victoria. But there's no big sign saying this is one of the most important Rubble. wars that decided the fate of civilization. No, there's a restaurant across it called Himera Restaurant. And then you sort of have to know that the Temple of Victoria is right there. Fascinating battle. And and Hannibal, uh, Hamakar also brought some elephants on the island, right? Well, that wasn't until his grandson Hannibal came. Okay? Hannibal brought that. Yeah, Hannibal Baca came. And the first thing he did was he went to Himera. And he conquered that whole area and yeah. he slaughtered all the Greeks that were over there and he knocked that temple down. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Hannibal uh, Baca ended up, of course, you know, we know the story about him. He ended up going to uh, across the Alps. Imagine that crossing the Alps with elephants in the wintertime. He actually got as close as the gates of Rome. The, you know, the old, the old ancients say that he actually threw his spear over the gate of Rome before he retreated, if you can believe that. But to make a long story short about Han Hannibal, he was defeated. He lost. He lost. He lost. A, he lost the Punic War. He had to go back. He had to go back to, uh, 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 you know, Carthage and kind of lick his wounds. Half his army was destroyed. All those elephants she's talking about, they ended up being on a grill someplace. They were all killed. <laughs> there wasn't any left. But to round up this conversation just a little bit, um, you know, the Romans ended up winning, as we know, the fate of history, Romans won. And it's interesting to note that the places here in Sicily that took the side of Carthage, they paid a big price under the Romans, right? So we know they the story sure about Syracusa. Syracusa uh, sided with Carthage. And for that, their famous son, Archimedes, was killed. Now, do you know who sided with the Romans and became the first city-state in the Roman Empire. You mean a favored state? Favored state. They didn't, have to pay, they didn't have to pay the price. Nope. Taumina. Taumina. They didn't yeah. have to pay uh, uh, taxes. But what I was going to say is Sicily became the first city state under the Romans. And Taumina was one of the first that didn't have to pay. Well, the Second Punic War, you know, the Romans never forgot the First Punic War. 
Frank. Right? They hated the Carthaginians. <laughs> they hated them, right? And Cato, if you remember the council, I mean, the uh, Senate, I love Cato in the Roman Senate, you know, and all those guys there. He's the one that came up with that phrase, allegedly, a Carthage Delenda Est, Carthage must love be destroyed. That. And Scipio uh, brought a bunch of Roman legions down there, and he ended up, not only did he destroy Carthage in the Second Punic War, because by that time, Carthage was kind of reduced to a very big power. But the story goes that after he, you know, destroyed Carthage and enslaved a lot of the people, he lit it salt over the, uh, the, the, uh, the city so that nothing could ever grow. As a matter of fact, people think they know where, the, where ancient Carthage was, but really it's not really definitively where uh, Carthage is. But the stories are great. Uh, great story. I love this part great of history. Great stories. Uh, the, uh, what do you call it? The symbol of um, Sicily actually is a battle elephant from that period of time, the so-called Leotti, uh, uh, the elephant. If you go to the Piazza Duomo, you'll see yeah. you'll see the elephant over there. And very very interesting the history, the initial history of, of Sicily. Yeah, and, and then of course came the Greek uh, Byzantine, and of course the Normans, the Arabs. But we'll do that another time. Uh, let's say hello to some people. Buongiorno, let's get Sicilian, says Jim Ingram. Buongiorno from Michelle and Joe and Cloudy, New Jersey. Thomas Cotoni, I want to hear where you guys are watching from. Buongiorno from Charlestown. Ciao, Manny is here. Julie is here. Hi, Julie. Uh, look at this. John Petrezino, look how smart he did his, um, his name. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> Backwards, funny. Uh, by the way, if you guys are seeing, oh, Peter Scapelletti is here. He's also uh, Joe and Sue. Good morning, Pat Greeley from Boston. B and Don Orlando is here. Sean Lewis, good morning, Sean Lewis. I hope you enjoyed that little history lesson. I'll leave you a link to that um, show or that episode that we did with uh, Gaetano Cipolla, which was very fascinating. Good afternoon Hi, Tim. from England. Tell me something about the quality of healthcare in Sicily. I can, okay, I can course. handle that. It's vastly superior to that of the United States. I'll put it to that way. Okay. Uh, Sicily is ranked far higher than the United States. I think the United States is ranking and just came out as like 30th. 30th. Okay. You get screwed, blued, and tattooed with the prices in the United States of America. <laughs> the prices are obscene. Okay. Here, they're good, okay. They have they have two, they have nationalized medicine, which is subsidized by a VAT tax of twenty two percent and a tax rate of thirty percent. But you can buy, as they say, private insurance, and they have a series of health clinics as well. The doctors here are so good that it's it's crazy. I've been going to a new hot clinic in Nevada to get checked out. Nothing really is wrong with me, but I've been checking up in my heart, and I was stunned. Shocked, as they say, <laughs> at the examination that I had. I've had I've been struggling with high blood pressure my whole life, right? This doctor looked at me and he looked at my meds that the American doctor gave me. He said, "You see that drug?" He said, "There's no good. Stop taking it." I stopped taking it, and he gave me another one, and my blood pressure was almost back to normal, right? And I was saying to her, you know, I, I used to get I used to pay so much money for the test and so forth in the United States. How come the doctors never told me there to take these drugs? And speaking about drugs, most of the drugs available here that I am on, actually all of them, you don't have to have a prescription for. Yeah, that's You can get them over the counter. Pharmacy They're like six great. euro each. I was paying, I don't even want to tell you what I was paying. A lot of money, a lot of Dr. money. Dr. Rosemary, Hi, Dr. thank you for that super chat. Happy Orthodox Easter. Easter. Esther, long oh, live yeah. Magna Grecia. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Bruno is here too from my friend from high school. So happy to see you. Lisa. Lisa you and Gianna Bajorno from Connecticut. Uh, Sue Peterson is here. Good Sue. morning. Sue, say, Andrew Parisi. say hi to your husband for me, okay? And the girls, and the girls Jennifer yeah. is here. Okay, I saw a question back there about any Greek. Uh, towns, Greek-speaking towns, and I'm going to go Greek-speaking towns? Let me go see if I can find that. Uh, let me just be for you know, that. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think so. No, there I isn't. Never, no. The answer is Jardini no. Jardinianoxus was the first settlement. It's over 734 by, BC, yeah. 
Is mm-hmm. that exactly or approximately? It's exactly. Unbelievable. Exactly. Uh, Jardini <laughs> Noxus is a great little town at the bottom of Taumina. And the price differentiation between prices for hotels and apartments and stuff like that is about 60%. All you have to do is go three miles away from Taumina, and it's got a beautiful, beautiful beach over there. Yeah, I love it. Great restaurants. That's when everything is open, of course. And uh, it's so much cheaper. Our friend Roberto. Yeah, we had on right. earlier. That's what we had. He's a legend. He's now a big shot city council there. Did you know that? I know. Roberto. I, know. I love that guy so much. Joseph says, my father was born in Catolica Eritrea. Are you planning on touring the city? So one of the things that we have going on, if you guys are new around here, we've done episodes, ancestral home episodes from all over Sicily, and generally those are sponsored episodes. But the other thing I want to tell you guys is that we have the provinces series going on, and we did the province of Catania and the province of Siracusa. I'm wondering if you Which guys are well received, watched by the way. it and what you guys think of it. Joe and Michelle, oh, we already did that one. I'm going to see if I can find that question. Uh, yeah, Nanette, wish I was there. We know. And so why don't Nanette. we talk? Why don't we talk a little bit until I find this? I want to thank a few people before, while you're yeah, looking for it. Perfect. I want to thank uh, Jimmy Ingram. Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy made a uh, very generous donation this week that actually is sponsoring uh, today's program. So today's program is, is is being called by Alfred here, The Jim Ingram Show. <laughs> How do you like that, Jimmy? Yeah? He also sent me a package of something that I haven't been able to get yet because it's my friend Mike because Watt has it. Zone. We're in the red zone. We can't get to pick it up. But he also sent me an Easter, an Easter, whatever you call it, pa- yeah, a, a package, probably a piece. But Jim, Jimmy you know, is very generous. And we got another, another nice Linda Gilbert. Yeah, Linda, Linda Gilbert, Gilbert this week you, gave us a nice donation as well. So what so we're these, doing? These are ways that people. Well, it's a GoFundMe. These are ways that people are supporting this channel. So let me segue. Let me just read this first. Sure. Originally, I had the three percent Greek in my DNA, according to Ancestry, but it's been updated to a hundred percent Sicilian. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. Okay. Uh, Buongiorno from sense. Ireland. Watch every week. I'm hoping to move there by the end of the year. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Vivian, there is a peach. If Vivian was very, didn't she give a nice donation to the Sicilian project recently? Yes. Vivian is a dog. She's San Vito Lo Capo, her family is from, as I remember. Yes. Anthony says, can we talk in person when I come about citizenship with Alfred in person? Sure. Thank you, Jim. Can you talk about your new private member? I was just going to get to that, Helen. So perfect. So there's many ways for you to support this channel. Esther's idea, by the way. Esther's idea. Did you just interrupt? No, that's not an interrupt. I'm giving you. I'm I'm littering you with love. (laughs) So. One of the things, uh, Dr. Rosemary did a super chat, which you can do here. We also have our GoFundMe, but now we have a members only, and I just set it to price of $1.99, and basically it's another way to support your channel, and with it you get special badges, and I'm hoping Vib makes us uh, some cool emojis. I'm thinking like emoji of like a tunacria. Then I was even thinking of an emoji for you of like a peep. So these are the little badges and emojis that people can use. But the best part is that we're going to have this behind the scenes uh, video, some outtakes, uh, things that you will not see on this channel or our Facebook page. It's so it's be just, stu- it's one ninety nine a month. You can cancel at any time. So Um, Uh, Can I just ask that person who commented, asked about the Greek uh, city question to comment it again because we're having so many chats I can't find it. Can I I say something? We have so many videos that we take that we don't put on our programming, okay? I bet you we have three or four hundred. And I was looking at them a couple weeks back and I was kind of peeing my pants. A lot of them are funny stuff, the whimsical stuff. So I said to her, geez, it's too bad we couldn't do something like TikTok, put up a 15-second, you know, thing. So she came back, she thought about it, and come to find out that now they have this membership thing on YouTube. So she investigated it. Yeah. So we decided it's got to be good, funny stuff, whimsical stuff, observational stuff, 
uh, and we're going to really start loading it up on Monday. So it's one night, one dollar and ninety nine cents works out to a cup of coffee a month, right? How yeah. much is a cup of coffee? Cost? So we figured if we can get a few hundred people being private members, that greatly subsidizes the cost of what we're doing. We'd like to get a brand new and larger. I would like to get for her. A, a editing screen because she's always hunched over <laughs> and the poor girl is wearing glasses now and she's walking around the house with a shawl and a cane because it's making her old. <laughs> so you, got, you can help was, out. That was funny. That was Thank funny. You very much. Uh, Jim says Esther knows the healthcare personally after the accident. Yeah, I have to yeah. tell you in the hospital, they were so super friendly after I broke my leg in 2018. Uh, without health insurance, I went in there. They took care of me because I'm a stranieri. Didn't have to pay a penny, not a penny in the hospital. And then the follow-up, the woman, right, um, Canizado, I went, had to go see her every 30 um, days, then at 65, then at 90. And they were just super, super helpful. Um, and then my PT, I love the place uh, where I did my PT, thanks to our friend Claudia, right? Um, and also there, they were. it didn't cost a lot. I can't remember exactly how much my PT was. I had to go 10 times. But the healthcare system is unbelievable. Now, let me just tell you about our dentist, who is also incredible. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. We have a great you know? dentist. And they're so, not only friendly, but very knowledgeable. Very, very knowledgeable. We've, um, since we've had this dentist, we've had a few of our friends, I tell a few of our friends to go there, and they also, Anne Marie and Mike went there, also they had a great experience. What about the pharmacist? The pharmacist, the, the far pharmacist. more knowledgeable than the, the people I see in the United States. I mean, the United States, when I was a kid, we had the corner pharmacies, correct? Every town had a corner pharmacy. The guy knew you and your mother and father and grandmother and grand by by name, right? Then they got wiped out by the CVSs, the Walgreens, the buy rights. And little by, just like when Walmart came in, they wiped out the small little local people and you lost that local flavor, so to speak. Not the case here. Here, it's all mom and pop uh, pharmacies. There aren't any national chains like that. Typically, the pharmacists are well-trained, as are the people who are behind the gate giving you advice. Typically, there's only two or three people that work in these pharmacies. Am I right, Esther? Yeah, I mean, they're, they terrific. are the best thing about it is I'll go in there, I'll have some kind of a feeling ailment. Instead of going to my doctor, making an appointment, mm -hmm. blah, 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 they'll take their time, ask me follow-up questions, and uh, prescribe whatever. And, you know, I would have to say that 99% of the things that I had going on, whether I had some kind of a stomach virus or something, uh, they – were helpful. Let me just quickly uh, we, give you a rundown. We, we've got I want to Sean give you a rundown. Lewis is a new member. Welcome, hey, Sean. Thank let me, you. Let me just give you a, uh, a rundown over here of when you decide to live in Sicily, okay? After you get your residence card, and at some point in time, we're going to describe Esther's experiences of getting the mm -hmm. resident card here. You want to get your medical card, but you can't just get your medical card. What you have to do is you have, you have to get what they call a home doctor, which is a doctor in your area typically a, a home doctor, he's like a, a referring physician, okay? He usually handles about two or 3,000 people in the, the immediate area, okay? And if you have something wrong, say you have a heart condition or you have diabetes or something like that, God forbid anything worse, he will refer you to another doctor, although you don't have to use the other doctor. You could use whoever you want. But he's the guy that kind of like says, hey, Go get your blood tested, and they'll send me the results, and we'll have a, a meeting. You don't make any appointments. <coughs> you just show up. Mm -hmm. It's free. You hear what I'm saying? It's free. It doesn't cost you any money. But what about, you know, all the taxes, Alfred? Listen to me, okay? We have what they call a VAT tax, value-added tax, okay? A VAT. Now, typically, it's 10%, okay? So if you buy something that's 100 euro, there's a VAT, 10%. That gets thrown into... That gets thrown into the national treasury to pay for all the insurance. And if it's things that are of an opulent nature, say, for example, you want to buy a Maserati or a Ferrari or one of those really mm -hmm. expensive cars or a yacht or something like that, it's a little bit higher. So essentially, what they've done over the years, little by little, is those who are wealthy pay a far more disproportionate disproportionate amount of the taxes in Italy 
than the normal people. As a matter of fact, if you make less than 7,000 euro a year, that's about 9,000 US dollars. You don't pay any taxes whatsoever. Now, there's only five, less than 5 million people here. I don't know if that's going to work with a country like the United States as to where there's 380 million. It's a bazillion times bigger. But for here, it works. For okay, here. Helen, I found the question. Are there any Greek-speaking towns left in Sicily? The answer is no. Um, and in fact, um, uh, the names, Agrigento, Syracuse, those are ancient Greek names that remain. Of course, a lot of these towns also had name changes when the Normans, the Arabs, and all the other conquerors came. But when you're talking about the language, no, there are no. no. Let me just welcome a few more. Uh, well, well Sicilia, Sicilia. Atlantis, uh, graphic and web design of Ireland. Welcome. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching it. Thank you for thank tuning you for in. Being, Appreciate um, it. John says those small mom and pop pharmacies still exist. That's good, John. That's, That's good. To I hear. hope you're doing okay, Johnny. We miss you. We haven't seen you for a while. The uh, last time we saw you was at the Duomo. Remember, we went to the bar and John came show, showing yeah. up. Boy, uh, Sherry says, that that. Hi, well, my sister and I are still trying for September for Sicily. Enjoy your show. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, that, that could be a, um, could be happening by then. So be. why don't, okay, wait a sec. Um, I saw something from Sweden. Welcome, Sweden. Nice to see you. Oh, my God. Sweden. Uh, one ninety, $1.99. $1.99. $1.99 a month. That's, that's a, Cup of espresso, and you can cancel it any time. A dollar and ninety nine cents, not one ninety nine a month. No, that'd be a hundred. Um, no, have not we that. ever been to Roca Palumba? No, we haven't. I don't. What province is that in? Let me. Know. Roca Palumba. I don't know where that is. Yeah, Joseph. No, Alfred. Do the cigars ever stay lit? The problem is, as you can tell, it's, it's a little bit yeah. windy hey, can today. Can I answer that question as, as a Toscanello smoker? Yeah. The answer typically is no. <laughs> They're so cheap. They cost a buck each. My good ones, they last a lot longer. But when you smoke a Toscanello, it's not meant to be smoked. It's meant to, it's more of like an oral fixation just to keep it in your mouth. You take a couple puffs, it goes out, talk, especially when you're talking, because I'm a talker, goes out, light it up. You One, a talker? What? <laughs> what are you going to do? All right. Tony says, is there any ongoing discussion of plans to build the bridge? Oh. Uh, we talked about this uh, on the chat of maybe two or um three weeks ago, and right now there's something called the Recovery Fund from uh, the national government, and this project, while a lot of Sicilians, well, it's mixed, they would like to see it, environmentalists, of course not, uh, there are no discussions right now, it's off the table. So this is, a, by the way, a proposal that has been discussed I would say since the Roman times. I mean, this, they've been talking yeah. about con connecting. I don't want to go too much into it because we spent, you know, like 20 minutes on one on one of the shows. So uh, I'm against it. I'm one of the few people I know that's against it. All her pals are for it. I'm against no, it. No, that's not true. I think there's too much corruption involved. The, the Sicilians have got to prove to themselves, to prove to me, <coughs> that at the administrative level, the political level, you're not a crook. All right. There are too many crooks here, just in my okay, opinion. Okay, but stop shaking the table. Right, okay. Uh, <coughs> let's see. Joseph says, my wife broke her foot in Sicily in 2006 in the city famous for its ceramics. It's either Caltagirone, Santo Stefano de Camastra, or Shaka. Uh, Shaka. And went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. The public restroom didn't have toilet paper, towels, or so. Well, what can you do? How was uh, it? How was the treatment? I wonder if it's yeah, a small I hotel. Was, if it's a small hospital, okay. But if the I hope they treated her terrific, well, and yeah. it's you know, it's it can be really scary having something major. And we've had yeah, some Pat, people, you're right for two bucks. Um, we've had some people seek hospitalization. I think Don and B are still here. Let us know, Don and B. You guys had a pretty good, um, pretty good service over at the hospital in Giardini. Nazis, no, that I was Tamina. Yeah, Didn't you have to go to the – no, you went to the hospital. It's called the Taumino Hospital. Though. Oh, okay. That's the name of the hospital. Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, uh, let's see. Jim says – now, uh, the other thing – let me see. The here. ferry does just fine in my view, Jim. It's a 20-minute drive over there. For heaven's sakes, it's going to cost 12 billion euros. I remember when the big dig was – when they were doing the big dig in Boston, that thing went triple overtime over the budget. Right? You don't think that this one's going to go over the budget? Hello? Yeah. 
Give it to the poor people. And they're thinking the tide gets so high. And oh, also that straight is just, just windy. I think unwindy. it's 10, 10 miles an hour, the, the, the current. It's like terrible over there. That's yeah. just what I think. Um, Good. I hope okay. to see you here, Please John. Please repeat your TikTok idea. I joined late. But, uh, well, the TikTok idea, it was something about doing TikTok, the shorts. TikTok. Uh, shorts. Dr. Rosemary, welcome, new member. So happy you guys are doing this. So I what is she know. talking about? Hmm? Is what she was talking about the, is why we're doing talk. our private members. We're doing our private member things because we have a lot of video that we don't normally post. We're gonna keep on doing our free stuff on yeah. our YouTube. Don't, let's, let's, that's got nothing to do with anything. We love our longer mm -hmm. videos. We love doing our shots, but we have so much video that we don't use. Yeah, like funny stuff. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes stuff, bloopers, hilarious observations that people would I When I watched it myself, I laugh. We, we crack each other. <laughs> They're hilarious. Uh, so we're going to put them up. And says, Sicily has bases. the only boat, uh, Ferrari, that takes a, a train over from the mainland. I just found that out. That's interesting. There are more than one boat. There's many boats that go over. You're talking about the ferries? There are about six of them. It's probably um, owned by one family. I'm not sure, though. That I don't know. Fred says, Al, true story. My hotel in Shepalu selling Chivas whiskey. The factory is Chivas. Chivas. Wow. That is very cool. Okay. Um, Chivas whiskey thing, is available. Traverse City. Buena Sera from Traverse City. Hey, Elena, that's so funny. I used to work in Calumet in Michigan over in Marquette when I was working at the ABC. Uh, station over there, and oh. we used to go to Traverse City all the time. Where is that, Michigan? Yeah, Michigan. No. Get back, getting back to the Shivas thing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know the famous actor, uh, Charles Palminteri? You, you know him, right? He was in uh, a Bronx Tale, right? He opened up a steak, a steak uh, house in mm -hmm. New York City that's really famous. It's called Beefy. Drink, okay? Beefy. Beefy, yeah. yeah. About Eight, nine years ago, I got a phone call from Roberto. He says, uh, some guy wants to speak to you. He gave me, Roberto gave him the phone. It was Josh Palminteri's uh, business partner who was a dentist. He says, are you attorney Zappolo? I said, yeah. He says, we read your book. We loved your book. I says, oh, thank you. I says, what brings you to Sicily? He says, we've developed a vodka that we're making in Messina, right outside of Messina. We're going to sell it in our steakhouse. So in the United States, for the first time ever, there is a Sicilian, Sicilian vodka. vodka called BV that That's you could funny. buy at Charles at uh, at uh, what's it? Charles Palminteri's uh, uh, Steakhouse, who, by the way, is the first cousin of my pal from St. Francis College, Tony Palminteri, who never watches the show though. <laughs> Good story. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's for the shout out. My name is Atlantis. Excuse me. I'm sitting here waiting for Ireland to take Italy off the mandatory hotel quarantine list. Atlantis graphic web and design from Ireland. So why don't we talk about that a why little bit? Why don't you put your website up? Maybe people need some design work. You know, we, we, we don't mind if you put your website up. The only thing we don't like is naked pictures, especially of guys like Jimmy Ingram. We don't want to see any naked pictures of Jimmy Ingram. Buongiorno. We have a, a small pharmacies on Staten Island also. The good, one a few blocks from me is owned by two brothers. Perfect. And they've been, that's 25 years. And now they know all their customers. That's the way it is here. That's yeah. the way it should be. Um, They're right. It's Helen, right. I tried to put it, but it looks like U.S. dollars. I can't see the plus for both. We appreciate it anyway. Um, so let me just also just take a second to say what one say? more time. I don't understand the question. That's okay. She's in Canada. She's in Canada. Oh. Let me just say again, you know, let's just take oh, me take a Canada. second to yeah. thank you guys uh, for your support. And thank you also for your time. You know, you guys, a lot of you guys are repeaters here. And we are really, really honored that you take the time to spend here with us. And we have fun doing this. So I hope guys are having fun too. Now here's what I want to do. I do Joe want Asioni. To do a couple of things. I love um, that guy. I want to first of all talk about the situation here in Sicily and Italy. Oh but the first COVID? I want to hear what subjects you guys would want to hear more about. And let me just say a quick Thomas Catoni is a new member. Thank you, Thomas. Okay. Um, thank you very much. 
We're going to get a big, Let's talk a about biggest the screen computer for Esther. This is a humanitarian gesture. I'm Alan, we love you. What about me? They love Joe, you. Joe, I'm telling I you, love you're Sue. a special friend, man. You are, <laughs> and, and so is your wife. You're a special guy. You've been with me since the beginning. You've been with us since the beginning. Yeah. Been, and the same thing with Jimmy. Jimmy's been around for a long time, too. Vivian. We have... Okay. We have a lot of friends that have been around for and a it's, long time. And, and, you know, like these friends, you know, we all feel like you guys are family members. They are I'm family. Here. In my view, they yeah. are family. Okay. Um, are family. One more thing. Um, Peter says, oops, you guys are brilliant. You both have helped me and Kitty through a lockdown. Oh, that uh, makes me so happy. Wait a second, please. I want to say thank you to Joe. He's a big new member here hi, Joe. as well. Thank you, Joe. Uh, there was a Green Cross pharmacy at the north end of Boston. Boston. I years. hated when he retired. They, we have the yeah. Green Crosses here, too. That's how you find the pharmacies, the big Green Cross. Yeah. Uh, up. Uh, you know, we didn't talk about the Roman occupation here. Well, let, let's go. Let's talk about the situation in Sicily because we'll talk okay, about okay. that next week. Okay, you guys. So here's the situation. But I can't tell my joke. You, didn't you already tell the joke? No. Did I tell a joke today? No. Yes, you did. But I let didn't. me talk about the situation in Go Sicily ahead. and Italy because it's important. A lot of people are wondering, obviously, whether you guys can come here to Sicily and Italy. The answer is not yet. There are discussions going on, but there's nothing definitive. What is new here in the EU is that they're going to start, starting on the 10th, a trial of the so-called green pass or green certificates. What is that? That is either a physical piece of paper or you take your phone and there's an app that shows that you have been vaccinated both times, that within the last six months you've had COVID and recovered from COVID, and that you have had the antibodies. Now, this is, you know, something that the EU will be uh, discussing even more um over the next week because so it, this will happen. It's just the uh, tidbits of uh, the details of how it's exactly going to be implemented. But the important thing to note that of the 27 states of the European Union, each country, each member state has the right to put in other restrictions. So for instance, let's say that the Green Pass works and it's only by the way right now for European citizens going through EU, European, EU citizens. EU citizens. Let's say Italy says, well, you guys can come here with your green pass, with your green certificate, but you'll still have to quarantine seven or 10 days. So every member state has that right. Now, one of the things that they were hoping that by June, you know, all of this will be ironed out and most of the EU will be open for member states. And then I believe the next step will be opening up to foreigners. So people keep saying September, but we don't know. We hope it's soon. I think as more people get vaccinated in Italy, the numbers will go down. The same thing yeah. with the United States. They're, they're actually going to start bringing it. And Esther and I are going back and forth about that. She says, well, Pfizer is all over the place. Baloney. You can't find Pfizer. Who got Pfizer are the old people that were in the nursing homes and the medical people. Then they got ran out. And now you get AstraZeneca. Honey, honey, I don't honey, believe it. I don't honey. believe it. When they He's get wrong. Pfizer... Or when they get J and J, and no, because thirty or forty percent of the Sicilian people are not getting vaccinated because they think they get stuck with AstraZeneca, like me, for example. Okay, uh, Peter, thank you for the midweek show last Wednesday. Yeah, you guys, we just decided Jeez, to we had go a lot live, of people watching. and one of the reasons that we went live was to dispel this whole. Uh, I saw a bunch of articles in the United States saying that by the summer. Uh, Italy will be open. So we wanted to discuss that. Plus, we talked about, and I'll leave you a link uh, for that show. It was kind of a fun show about some of the things that shocked or surprised us uh, when first coming here. Let me just say hello to Rosanna. Ciao, Rosanna. Rosanna. Thank Donna, Donna. you, Sue and Joe. We miss you guys a lot. I miss you and I miss Jimmy a lot. Jimmy used to come over every night and sit around and meet. Esther and Jimmy would, you know, chew the fat, drink wine. And I was always outvoted two to one almost every night. Well, as it should be. Uh, Fred says, if you <laughs> love your art sculpture, check out my friend Michelle's mind-blowing. Okay, Fred, send me a note about that. 
Uh, Thomas Come said on. Air Portugal has a sail to Rome, then fly from Boston, New York, to see a Miami round trip. New York will be. A, I saw all those flights too right now going to Boston because I really would like to go see my mom yeah. uh, in Boston. But the shortest flight is like 27 hours. Normally they're between 11 13, and 12, yeah. right. 13 mm -hmm. hours. So ridiculous. I mean, you lose two days. You lose one day traveling, right? And then you're tired for two more days. So uh, let That's me just. That's because you're getting out of The joint. Me, I get wait, now right just, up I'm and just going to read. Just ignore, ignore him. <laughs> delete, delete. Uh, the join button doesn't show in the YouTube app or iPhone, iPad. I had to use my browser version to join. Please let the viewers know that is as well confusing for me. Joe, thank you very much. Hi, okay. Joe. That's good thank to you. know. And thank you. Thank for you for joining. Joining. Appreciate it. Uh, great show. Thanks for the info. Too soon to know the name of the app for the Green Pass. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, this, just, week, this is this in the week, talking page right now. Well, this no, week. this week they're going to talk more clearly about that app. Uh, Jim says he's booking a ticket this week for September 7th to December 4th. Oh, that great, awesome. Jimmy. That'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great. Jelly beans, Jimmy. I need some jelly beans. <laughs> the jelly beans in Italy are awful. I want the gourmet ones. You know, the ones that are a little color so I can say, oh, coconut. Oh, right? Oh, yeah. The ones here are like all sugary, sugar, sugar. And it... Yeah. Where, what's that store we go to where you get the, is it the, what store uh, in the it's, mall? It's, it's, a, it's a store. This, there's a store from Denmark that's uh, really that a good called? store. It's like it's like the equivalent of a dollar store. It's all cheap junk, but they have good cheap junk that are like candies and nuts, right? Is that the one you're talking yes. about? Yes. Uh, so, Fred. We talked about it. Oh. He's drinking a Sicilian screwdriver. Want to show it? Because well, the people who are just okay. just joining us, the I'm just having a orange and a fresh. Uh, I'm happy because it's because the oranges are just about spent. Just about now, we're gonna be, the transition no, is going to be starting. Lemons, look at the size of this baby. These are the winter oranges. The winter uh, uh, blood oranges are just about be another couple of months. They're going to be gone. Another couple of weeks, they're going to be gone. And then the uh, spring food. Uh, wow, Thomas, that is so great. Well, uh, flight leaves Newark at six p.m. Gets into Rome, eleven thirty the next week. Wow. So, but I think that they're not going right now uh, directly from Boston. I think they were for New me. It. They would have what you have to do, Tom, is watch out because here's what they're doing: they're taking your money, and then, and then they cancel. two days beforehand they're yeah. canceling it if they don't have enough thing, enough thing. And then you have to they'll give you a voucher. They won't give you your money back. They'll give you a voucher unless you really bitch like crazy to the uh, to the credit card companies. Keep keep an eye on those tickets, okay, and make sure you check them frequently. Uh, John wants to say, uh, when are the chinotto in season? What the hell are chinotto, John? Chinotto are those, those, those chinotto, they're always. What they're are always, they? Those are, I, I believe those are the non-alcoholic drinks, right? Chinotto? Chinotto. No, chinotto is, that's good 12 months a year. You can buy that stuff all over the place. I don't know what they are, John. I'm probably, I'm, I don't, there's a lot of stuff I don't know. Condi wants to know, curious which airlines people are using from the United States. Generally, Alitalia. we use Alitalia. I like Swiss Air. I think they're really great. Uh, Lutanza, what are, you guys, what are you guys using? Let me know in the comments. Um, Air France also. Air France. So let me see here. Uh, Joe, or Al, can we still rent that car with automatic drive from your mechanic? Yeah. Yeah. Uh He's talking about my friend from Volcano uh, Restorations in, uh, yeah. I mean, the cars are like put together cars, but they run. Matter of fact, I've rented one for years. They're like a third of the price, and the guy backs them up. But they're basically, it's a glorified rent a wreck travel agency uh, car. <laughs> <Rent -a -wreck. laughs> no, they are. Yeah, but right? this guy has such an interesting story, too. He guy. renovates Fiat's, yeah. and we did. Restores I know, them. He restores I, them. I know this is going to shock you, but we did an episode on him. He's over there near Ciganella, and he's got some beautiful Fiat's with all types of colors, uh, and they're so fun. One of my dreams here in Sicily is to have a red Fiat. Red Fiat. Red Fiat. You want a Fiat? Yeah, everyone knows that. Fiat's are my favorite. Pronounced Quinoto, they're the uh, Sicilian oranges. They have those in the store all the time. The small ones that look like a widow. Wow. 300. That is 
crazy. That is crazy. Wow, I Anthony. saw 400, uh, 400 for Boston, which is also just crazy. Yeah, Delta. We forgot Delta. That's right. This one um, of those airlines I'm not going to fly because they just, they just, there's so many stories I've heard about them. I'm going to, people, people like, I like Lufthansa. Honestly, there's more room in the economy section. You go to Hamburg or you go to, what's the other place? You know, you know Lufthansa is my favorite. They're the best ones. They're a little bit more money, but it's worth it. You know, I'll tell you. What did they say about Alitalia? Always late, late, take take off off and landing. That's what it's called. What did they say about Fiat? Fix it again, Tony. (laughs) (laughs) No, Fiat's now. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's right. Pat Greeley, we hesitantly flew Turkish air yeah, because the fare was great. It was great. Yeah, actually, Pat, we've had several of our clients fly that. Uh, Denise Dolce did that, and she said it was don't super bad. Don't drink on that flight. What are you talking don't about? Get, don't get Berlin. drunk. It's an Islamic country. Alfred, it's not the airline. Alfred. No, Turkish Airlines we're talking yeah. about. Don't right. drink on that flight. Al, oh, they're allowed to drink. People they, serve, get, they serve drinks. Yeah, but people get the, and once you land in Istanbul, they got to watch you like a hawk. They, they are just, not, Al. Don't. And that's the airport. Right Let me oh tell you something. God. Wait, can I just say one more it's thing? It's Haram. You can't drink alcohol. Uh, Alfred, in it's Islamic the, the airline doesn't have that. Pat, am I right? Don't. Pat, am I right? No. Pat, leave me a comment if I'm right. I want to talk about something else, which was a milestone yesterday in Italy, really important. They vaccinated 500,000 people a day. That was one of the goals that they were going for. Uh, the new general in charge, he's a military man. Uh, Got a good Filio, job. I believe, I can't, Fulilio, I think is yeah. his name. Um, he's, in, uh, he's a military man, so logistics is his thing. So the whole vaccination thing, he's got it. Uh, moving along, moving along. Now, they want to have like a million by June, a million a day. We'll see. The other big milestone yesterday in Italy, 20 million people vaccinated. Total of 20 million. Population of Italy is about 60 million. So About a third. About a third. Now, here in Sicily, we're about 1.8 million in a population of just under six, more more like 5 million people. Um, so, you know, they're doing all types of things. Now they're talking at the bathing establishments, you know, the Lido's, they're, they're talking about doing shots in the summer for the, especially for the younger population. So there's all types of things going on here in Sicily to try to accelerate. Now, Wait a minute. We speaking have another story of that, to tell. you tell that story. <laughs> Everybody's saying how crooked the mafia is, right? Yesterday, a New Yorker. I think he was from New York, right? A guy who owns a business in Sicily got arrested at the Palermo airport flying a, a private jet into Palermo. He got grabbed Trapani. by... Trapani. Trapani? Yeah, from he, Florida. From Florida. <laughs> he had drugs. He had guns. What was he thinking? Cash, right? What was he thinking? He didn't pay off the right people, evidently. I don't know what the story was, but I thought I laughed that that guy thought he would be able to get that stuff into this country with these cops. These cops are great. Okay. They they, they did a sting on in Monday in Catania. Listen to this, okay? They had the cops stop every car for two hours. And behind the cops was a huge line of tow trucks. They ended up giving four hundred citations out at four hundred euro a pop. Confiscating a hundred cars because they weren't insured and arresting 26 people. Now, 13 morons decided to (laughs) run away from the cops on their motor scooters, figuring that they could outrun them, you know? They didn't realize that they had a fleet of motorcycle cops there, and those 13 got arrested too. They chased them down and arrested. Can you imagine that? 400 Crazy. people in two hours. Um, Thomas says, before they went out of business, we flew Air Italy. Italy. Great. Great. Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, like I said, yeah, Al, you don't leave the airport and it's about chill. I say That's chill right. to you him. Don't oh, then chill out. No, I read a story recently where a woman was in, was complaining the whole flight over, and she got a little bit tipsy on the plane, drinking wine. She got off the plane, went into the, what do you call it there, the terminal, 
and she started to complain there, and they arrested her well, because, she, because was she was intoxicated. Well, they, yeah. it was, you can drink, just don't get intoxicated. That goes every airline. Albert. I don't. Every airline. I don't. Every airline. Ever, I love Turkey. How does that sound? Okay. okay. I love Turks. All right. If you I get do. drunk on any flight, you're going to But I respect the culture immensely, and I would never drink in Turkey. Like the same thing in Dubai or any of these countries. I would never drink in those countries. What are you talking about? Uh, Tim UK here in UK vaccinations. If you guys don't know, will you stop moving the table? Come if you on, guys having don't a good know, time today. Half the time he's just yes. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna tell my joke. Wait a right second. Now. Wait a second. Here in the UK, vaccination started for over 30, but I passed it at it was yesterday. There you go, Tim. Um, yeah, most but of they're the time, promoting this it man right, right here is joking. Joking. Okay. A New Yorker from Florida, the best in. in Wait a second. Let me read a couple more. Uh, what month do Sicilians vacation? That is, what month should July. we avoid? August. August. Ferragusta. Yeah. Ferragusta. Ferragusta. Ferragusta is it. crazy here. You have people from even from Rome coming here. That is nuts. Starting on August 14th to uh, about a week, and a lot of places do close. Um. So. I would say August, don't come here. Uh, the other thing, wait a second. Uh, alcohol is legal in Turkey. I hosted a party for 200 clients at the uh, Sultan's Palace in Istanbul. Wow. Overlooking the- How long ago was, was that? a beautiful place. Joe, how long yeah. ago was that? Uh, no problem drinking in Sicily, I see. No, no problem. <laughs> uh, we, I know, I know. Cracky Roseanne, yeah. Wait a minute, I have to tell a story. The Roseanne, okay? okay? During the Roman occupation, she never tells you about the Roman occupation. I love the Roman occupation. Well, I system. thought we'd save it for next week. <clears throat> Can I tell my quick story? Sure. Chico. Chico. All right, anyway. So a, Ro a Roman legionnaire goes into a Sicilian bar. <laughs> okay? This is a good story. A Roman legionnaire goes into the Sicilian bar. We're talking about 28 BC. And he says to the, the bartender there, give me five beers. That's the joke. Get it? Five beers. See? Five. Honey, that was a good joke. That's a hilarious. Well, that's an so intellectual old. joke. Um, who is Ro Rosa Balisteri? Oh, she's a singer. She's like, you know who's like her? Is uh, Michela Mussolino from uh, New Jersey, the singer, the Italian singer. She's a, a gal, great gal, good friend of mine. She's a very passionate, it's this ancient Sicilian uh Singer and Miguel is just like her. Miguel is awesome. She yeah. she talks about the ancient the ancient system. She's very she's very well known too. Uh, ciao, Canadian Charlie. Greetings from Malta. Enjoying a cappuccino. Only we can't yet. I heard the Maltese so, had some problems. With um, the, are you guys COVID, still huh? planning to visit the United States? Can't yes. wait. I miss my family. Yes. She misses her family. I want to go see my grandson MJ play baseball. My son, my son Matthew sends me video of he's in little league now or something like that. With, you know, little kids. I want to go see my grandkids. I miss yeah. them. I want to see long. my mom, my niece. Yes, but, Miguel Mussolino. Bro, she's a doll, isn't she? She's yeah. a good friend of mine too. Uh, Racapulmamba is in the province of Palermo. She's great. Rosa. Yeah, Rosa. Yeah. Rosa. Yeah. Uh, probably the province of Palermo will be the last one. You know what music is popular in Sicily in the summertime, Johnny? Johnny P, uh, the Gypsy Kings. Remember the Gypsy Kings? Yeah. They play the Gypsy Kings, and they play a lot of uh, Spanish lot of and Latin Latin music here. If you yeah. go, if you listen to the Italian, it's the same pop stations. They're playing, and they even play like guys like uh, Bob Molly, Peter Tosh. Yeah, when I used to go to my gym, all they played was American. It's well, crazy. Sometimes they played. No, they play yeah, Italian they play, music, but, they, but American not, music is really is really popular here. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Janet Lombardi is here Hi, from England. Welcome. Okay. Atlantis Graphic and Web Design Ireland. I got the Astra five weeks ago. My sister got oh, Pfizer great. last no, week. No, you haven't had any problems? About getting it. Atlantis, you haven't had any problems? I heard that 44 people, EU announced 44 people. Out of how many, though, Alfred? Blood clot. What? Out of how many, you know? I don't know, but guess what? I mean, it's, you know. Uh, you know, here's the situation, too, though. 
when I used to get the flu shot, I stopped getting the flu shot because I used to get so sick after it. So you did? You know, yeah. Well, maybe what like, makes you think that you're not going to get sick with the COVID it, it, shot? Well, exactly. Oh. Um, you know, yesterday at Catania you, was disgraceful. What? I'm telling you one. I was, I was going to puke. They made all these rules and regulations. You can't oh go out. God. Yesterday was May 1. Red Day. zone, blah, blah, blah. But then they showed a picture in Catania, the newspaper, of all the kids that were at the uh, the beach yesterday. It said, out of control, right? And you saw, as far as your eyeball can see, kids laying around the beach. I want to ask something. Where the hell were the cops yesterday? Right? Where was the military? They should have gone down there and get those kids and arrested them and get that vaccine and go like this to every one of them. But they don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I was that general, right, everybody would have a shot. <laughs> oh, Let's tell her about the lady downstairs oh, before wait, we go. Wait a second. Tell her about the lady oh, downstairs. Have a new we Listen have to this. A new neighbor. Oh my God. So this is so dog. cool. Uh, her son, how old is he? What's his name? Her son? Pietro. Pietro is her, her name son. is Maria, Maria Lena. Well, at first it was like, okay. Starting around seven or eight o'clock, we would hear this <coughs> screaming, yelling, like not people arguing, but some kind of ah, ee, ah. Yes, it was, they were they were screaming. screaming. <laughs> they were screaming. They're watching soccer, football here, yeah. and then he was playing Video games. So, games. It, so one night he was playing to like two o'clock in the morning. Right, we're like, oh, these new neighbors. Oh my God, they're gonna be so loud. But Alfred very diplomatically spoke to the boys so nothing's happened. Then we started talking. They stopped. To, they yeah. stopped at that. Um, yeah, till about nine, ten o'clock. Yeah. Uh, then we started talking to Maria. Grazia. Maria Grazia, beautiful girl. Turns out she was flirting she, with me too. Of course she was. <laughs> <laughs> she was a photographer in Kenya for 10 years Tango. for the United Nations. Tango. Imagine that. Yeah. I'm so excited to Dog. talk to nice her. Nice lady. Nice We're going to have her over here for coffee and talk a little bit. But imagine a Sicilian in Kenya for 10 years. Her English is beautiful because she learned the British English. She finally had to stop working there because it was so dangerous. They sent this to <laughs> Somalia. They sent it to Damascus. <laughs> That says, two kids, right? I'll have what Alice is having. I'll, I'm going to have <laughs> one of those, too. There's nothing like a good screwdriver. I mean, honestly, I was going to have a Bloody Mary, but she yacked at me. She <gasps> said to me, she said to me, you are going to open up the tomato juice? We have apple juice already, and we already have orange juice in the refrigerator. There's no room, so I couldn't have it. But next week, I'm going to have a... I want to have my first blood. I'm the general in the house. Oh, my God. Uh, Roseanne, today's Vincent Tatone's birthday. Mm. May he rest in peace. Oh, God bless him. Recreate and him. Pace, Vincenzo. What's that? I said rest in peace. Recreate and Pace. That's, that's, that's a good one. What? That's a good one. R.I.P. What's, what's the other one? We have another. Um, what? You had another Latin saying. Oh, this is, uh, this is when she wants money from me. She'll say, could I have 20 euro, Alfred? And she's very nice. He bats her eyes. And I say, de gusti, this is Latin. De gustibus non estis putandum. That was last week's that, No, that means you can't give what you don't have. Oh, oh, de oh. Gusti, no, the other one was a concerning taste. That can be, you know, this is okay. you can't give what you don't have. Today's Vincent, finest man there was. Yeah. I loved Vincent Tatum. God what a great soul. voice he had. Uh, he was a big Sicilian, too. Atlantis was um, ill for a week. I want to read this. I was ill for a week, but I'd rather be ill for a week than die. Yeah, you're right. You're right. As um, soon as I got my shot, Jojo, uh, Jojo. I was wondering if you sometimes run out of water in your home. No, but... Run out of water? But when they're working on the water, which they did, yeah. you know, it was out for a few hours, but no. no. I'm wondering why you would ask that. Curious. I'm going to ask. I'm going to tell you why, because here's the answer to that question. Most... Italian houses have on the top of the roof a huge cistern, a 500 or a thousand liter cistern filled with water. And the reason is, is because before, when the infrastructure wasn't as good as it is today, it's getting better, uh, the water outages were frequent. So the cisterns were connected to your water uh, thing in the house and they would kick in if the public water supply was unavailable. Okay. But now, but now, as a matter of fact, in my other two houses, I actually had uh, cisterns, okay? And you, the guy would come with a big 
you know, hose, fill them up when they got low. But over here now we have the public. The water is very heavily calcified. Yeah. Okay? It's what they call hard water. And you can see the shower, the shower had to always have Always have oh, so calcium build up yeah. in the sink too. So you have to. I frequently take off the shower heads and soak them in vinegar and water. But then after about a year, I have to throw the shower heads away in any case. Yeah, this they one's just, lasted us about two, three years. Yeah, we have to get another one. Um, Fred says each week in Say the Best Chat, Al's laugh is a riot. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Fred, I just have fun. That's all. We both you know, have fun. We both have fun. We Jen you Peterson, are enjoying now, there this. Is a hot tamale, that woman right there. I love Jen. A happy birthday, Vincent. We miss yeah. you and our lunches at Cacho and Vino. Glad we yes. found out he was family before it was too late. Great guy. Oh, I forgot to say hello. What's mama cooking? Love Bloody Mary's. Stand yes. your ground, Al. Thank you very much. I will. <laughs> I can't though. I always, I always lose every argument. I don't think I've ever won one argument. There we go. There we go. We're back. All right, you guys. So we're gonna that end is it. something that does happen, or the internet yeah, goes but it's a an little... hour. We're not supposed to be huh? we're over now. It's an hour. We froze up because it's Sicily, and sometimes we have trouble with the internet. All right, guys. Uh, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed us. Let us know what you want to hear more about in the chat. See you guys fun, next week. One. It was a fun one. It was a good one. Thank you week. for your time. We love you guys. And arrivederci. Ciao, ciao. ciao.